Welcome once again to explainingcomputers.com. A few videos back, I built a NAS, a network attached storage drive, using a single board computer, a ROC64, and the OpenMediaVault free software. And that works so well that in this video, I'm going to do a group test, a head to head of four different single board computers, all configured as a NAS using OpenMediaVault. Specifically, I'm going to return to the ROC64, this time using a faster SSD, so we can get the full benefit of its gigabit ethernet and its USB 3 ports. I'm then going to look at a Raspberry Pi 3, build a NAS with that. This will be constrained because it's got 100 megabit ethernet, not gigabit ethernet, and it's got USB 2 ports, but I do want to get a benchmark from a Raspberry Pi 3. I'm then going to look at this. This is a Banana Pro, a very interesting board to use to build a NAS because again it's got gigabit ethernet, but it's also got a SATA port. Probably not the fastest SATA port in the world, but a SATA port nonetheless, so it's a good NAS contender. And finally, I'm going to use this, an Udo X86 Advanced Plus. Again, this has got gigabit ethernet, it's got USB 3 ports, it's got a SATA port, it's also got an M.2 SATA slot, so lots of options for building a great NAS with an Udo X86 Advanced Plus. I just want to stress from the start, this is not a video about how to set up OpenMediaVault on a single board computer. I've done that in the previous video. This video is entirely focused on the group test. So, here we have our four contenders in this NAS video. The ROC64, the Raspberry Pi 3, the Banana Pro, and the Udo X86 Advance Plus, looking rather large compared to the other single board computers here. But we're going to start with the ROC64, which as in the last of these videos, is going to be connected to an SSD using this USB 3.2 SATA connector. And the only difference is, in the last video when I did a, a NAS on the ROC64, I used this SSD. This is an old Intel SSD, it's a single level cell SSD. I thought a very fast SSD, it probably was for each age, but I think this was a bottleneck in the tests last time. So here I'm connected up to a different SSD. This is a Samsung drive, as you can see, the Samsung 850 Pro, which is much faster. And I've already run some tests on this SSD using this USB 3 to SATA adapter, and I've obtained a transfer speed of 180 megabytes a second sustained. So I know it's a nice fast SSD that's running faster than gigabit ethernet, so that shouldn't be a bottleneck in the tests. So let's now get all this connected up and see how well it performs. Right, here I am on a Windows 10 desktop ready to test out the ROC with its highest speed SSD than last time. We'll open it up, the drive is all mapped there, all empty, waiting for some files. And as last time I've got two gigabytes of files I'm going to use in this speed test, so I'll copy those and we'll drop them over to that drive, see how fast it uh, copies. And uh, starting out very good and certainly giving us a massively better transfer speed than last time. That's, uh, that's good to see. It's not, well, it's about 90-ish, uh, up to 100 megabytes a second there. So uh, I think that's a very good benchmark for us. The ROC64 with a Samsung Pro SSD is performing very well. If we put those figures onto our table here, we've got a very good benchmark for comparing to the other single board computers. Right. I've now got the Pi 3 set up as our second contender here, again connected to the Samsung 850 Pro SSD as it's at NAS storage, but connected by a different SATA to USB adapter. This is a SATA to USB 2 adapter, which I know works very well on the Pi. It matches the fact it's got its USB 2 ports. And this, of course, will be a slower test because we are connected by USB 2 and because we've got 100 megabit Ethernet here, not 1 gigabit Ethernet. But even so, I wanted to get a benchmark for performance of a NAS on a Pi. So, here we are back on the Windows 10 desktop, ready to test out the speed of the NAS I've created using OpenMediaVault and the Raspberry Pi. You can see the ROC NAS has disappeared. It's hardly a surprise. Its components are being used for the Pi NAS down here. Let's open that up. And there we are with this nice empty folder. And again, we'll go to this uh, two gigabyte files for speed test and we'll copy them and we'll paste them over there, see how fast it is on the Pi. And of course, this is not going to be as fast. We know that it's got a USB 2 interface and it's got 100 megabit ethernet rather than one gigabit ethernet. So it's giving us a slower speed, slow enough in fact that I think I'll whiz through this so we can get towards the end. 
And uh, here we are, the Pi is finishing off, almost there. Yes, it's a copy of the files across. We'll stick those figures across onto the table. Clearly not the same as we got for the Rock 64. We didn't expect it, very much different hardware spec. But it proves you can use a Raspberry Pi to build a perfectly respectable NAS. Although let's now go on to see what we can achieve with other single board computers. Well, here I am back again, this time with the uh, Banana Pro, which is connected up to our long-suffering uh, Samsung 850 Pro SSD. We're getting good value out of this disc today, aren't we? And as you can see, the whole thing is connected together using these uh, 3D printed brackets, which uh, I put together in a video, I think it's almost a couple of years ago but now. If you look back to my Banana Pro video, I'll give you a link, of course. You can see how these brackets were made and uh, you can download the design for these from, from Thingiverse, where they happen to be. But in terms of the configuration of the uh, drive itself, you've got a standard uh, SATA power and data connector onto the drive there, and then it's through to a standard uh, SATA connector here, and uh, there's a power connector um, which goes into that. This is a special cable you can buy from Banana Pro for making these connections. So let's go and see how this performs as a NAS. So here we are back in Windows 10 to test out the NAS I've created on the Banana Pro. This was slightly trickier to set up because the software I could get hold of was a little bit older, version 0.03 back from 2015. But uh, I got the thing to work, and uh, as you can see, Open Media Vault is running perfectly happily in, in that circumstance. I did have to uh, mess around with the passwords to get into the thing. I had to go in via SSH and then to change the password to actually get into the web interface. But once that had happened, it all was set up OK. So uh, here it is. And now our, our Pi NAS has gone down because, again, we've moved on the hardware. But here is the, the share from a Banana Pro. So let's again take our test files and do a, a copy and see how fast this is going to be. And uh, this is not as fast, clearly, as the Rock 64, uh, but it is clearly much faster than the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. This suggests that the SATA port on the Banana Pro is certainly better than having USB 2, but not as good as having USB 3. Anyway, let's let it finish off its copy. And here we are, nearly complete, and uh, it is done, which gives us some more data to add to our table. So there we are, the Banana Pro NAS, operating faster than the Raspberry Pi, but not as fast as the Rock 64. Right, here I am back with our final hardware configuration, the Udu X86 Advanced Plus, which I've now got mounted up in its uh, little case. We call these things cases, don't we, on single board computers? They're actually uh, tops and bottoms and risers, but it keeps it all nicely protected. And here, Open Media Vault is going to be installed on the onboard EMC flash storage. It's got 32 gigabytes of onboard storage on u 6 Advanced Plus, that's very handy. And there's all sorts of options for how we can add the storage volume in Open Media Vault. We could use a USB 3 port, there's got one here, and in fact there's two more over there as well. We could use a, a SATA port, there's a SATA port there. But actually here, the storage volume is going to use the uh, M.2 slot on the bottom of, of the machine, which is here, which is now occupied with a Transcend 128GB SSD. So that should give us a very good storage available. So let's go and see how the Udu X86 Advanced Plus performs. Well, here we are again on a Windows 10 desktop. Do you ever get that sense of a deja vu? Well, so do I. And uh, this time I've installed Open Media Vault going directly to the uh, Open Media Vault website because I want an x86 version to install on the Udo x86 Advanced Plus. And as you just saw there, it's running very nicely here with its what's other on processor, etc. Seems to be very nippy compared to the others running this on the on the Udo on an x86 PC. Anyway, let's open up the share. You can see both the banana share and the pie share have given up the ghost because uh, we haven't taken their components this time, we're just not now connected. I'm running out of network connections to put them onto. Anyway, here's the share, and once again we'll go to the uh, speed test files and do a copy, and we'll see how fast it is going to that M.2 SATA SSD. And um, it's pretty fast. I think the bottleneck must now be the speed of the uh, Ethernet connection. It's going to be a little bit faster than the Rock 64, but not massively so. And yeah, we're getting there. Actually, it is quite a bit faster, isn't it? We'll see how that 
hits onto our table. There's the, the final result. Stick that on the table there. Yes, we can see the UDA X86 Advanced Plus is the fastest NAS I've built during the making of this video. As we've seen in this video, Open Media Vault can be used to successfully create a NAS on all kinds of different single board computers. And talking of different single board computers, during the production of this video, this has come to market, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. And if I'd used this in this video in terms of a NAS comparisons rather than using the original Raspberry Pi 3, it would have been faster as a NAS than the original Raspberry Pi 3. But it still would have been slower than the other boards here. Because the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, what a long title for a single board computer, it's still limited to USB 2 interface in terms of connecting storage. And although it's now got gigabit ethernet, the gigabit ethernet is also interfaced internally over USB 2. So it wouldn't have made a lot of difference in terms of the results, in terms of a NAS sort of hierarchy, if you were, the Raspberry Pi was still in the bottom of a list of the boards shown here in terms of NAS speed. Anyway, Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus is still a very interesting single board computer. I know a lot of you want to know more about it, and I'll be doing an in-depth review looking at its new speed performance and things like thermal performance in a future video. Returning to the subject of building a NAS, some of you might have been screaming at this video, Chris, why haven't you included a hard kernel board, an Odroid, in your review of NAS single board computer build? And that's a very good point. And in a future video, I'll be looking at two boards, the Odroid HC1 and the Odroid HC2, which are single board computers dedicated to building a NAS. So that'll be coming up in another future video, in addition to the future video on the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. How busy it is at the moment here on explaining computers. Anyway, that is it now for this time. If you've enjoyed the video, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.